Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Emil Plisch and I w have been working as a performance auditor uh, since 2007, mostly with uh, audits within the fields of uh, higher education, cultural policy and integration and migration policy. Thank you very much for inviting us today to present this performance audit report about reception and introduction of asylum seekers. And um, the start of something new, that's the title. Preparatory initiatives for the establishment of asylum seekers. And this report was published uh, by the Swedish National Audit Office in December last year. So it's a fresh new report. And the audit was carried out within one of our 10 audit strategies, uh, establishment and integration. Uh, together with my colleagues Johan Strömblad, who is here today, and Leif Svensson. And we have a team of four people from the Swedish National Audit Office, so please feel free to contact one of us afterwards if you have any questions or if you have comments and suggestions of what to audit, um, what more should be audited in this field. Um, First of all, I would like to give you a short presentation about the Swedish National Audit Office to our international guests, and perhaps you don't know so much about how we are organized. So, a very short presentation about the Swedish National Audit Office. We are a part of parliamentary control, and the overall purpose is to help to promote effective use of central government resources and an efficient public administration through independent audit of all central government initiatives, including migration and integration policy. Um, we conduct financial audit, performance audit and international cooperation with different countries around the world. Um, the Swedish NAO is headed by three auditors general appointed by the parliament and uh, we are 320 employees, 10, 100 performance auditors, three different performance audit departments and as I mentioned 10 performance audit strategies. And uh, about 30 performance audit report, uh, reports published each year which are submitted to the parliament. Now to our performance audit. Um, we um, audited, um, we have examined central government initiatives for the reception and introduction of asylum seekers from an integration perspective. This, is, this um, belongs to the migration policy, but we did it from an integration perspective. Um, and the, the function of the reception system and early initiatives for integration. While the um, asylum seekers are waiting for a decision from the Swedish Migration Board, which initiatives for integrations do they meet when they uh, are in the system? Uh, and um, we uh, examine the government's control and follow-up of the system and uh, the government offices of Sweden, including the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry of Employment, and also the Swedish Migration Board. And uh, the Swedish uh, Migration Board is organized, uh, they have different reception units around, uh, 25 different reception units um, and this was our main focus to uh, examine this. Um, and also the Swedish uh, Public Employment Service and their uh, assigning uh, persons granted residence permit to a municipality of residence. So this was our um, performance audit. And uh, the question, the general audit question was, are the initiatives of central government for, for the reception and introduction of asylum seekers effective in facilitating and speeding up their establishment and integration in Sweden? And one of our starting points was the reception of Asylum Seekers and Others Act from 1994. 
And uh, in that act, it says that the migration board shall, to an appropriate extent, offer asylum seekers activities in the form of Swedish les lessons, among other things. So this was our starting point. And um, some audit background. Um, it, there is an increased number of asylum seekers from uh, 30,000 2011 to 44,000 last year. Uh, it's a risk of longer periods spent in the reception system. And the in initiatives within the reception system are to equip asylum seekers both for a future establishment in Sweden and a possible return. And then we have, as was said before, a very difficult housing situation in Sweden. And this is very difficult right now. It's the biggest question to be addressed. Where should all the newcomers live? That's um, a big question. Um, and the data and methods used in this audit was we v visited a number of different reception units and uh, six different units in Boden, Göteborg, Malmö, Norrköping, Flen and Stockholm, um, and interviewed decision-making officers at the Swedish Migration Board and case officers, people working with asylum seekers while they are in the reception system. And uh, we also uh, met some asylum seekers and talked to them about their situation. And we also carried out a survey to employees in, at the Swedish Migration Board working at different reception units. Uh, about 400 employees answered our survey. And this gave us very uh, important information about how it works. Uh, and uh, this was very, um, very important for the audit. Um, as I mentioned, 44,000 people last year, uh, 14,700 permanent resident permits were issued by the Swedish Migration Board. Uh, we have about 43,000 asylum seekers registered in the Swedish Migration Board reception system. Uh, and it's increasing. So it's a very difficult situation also for the Swedish Migration Board to handle this situation. Uh, and the risk of longer periods spent in the reception system is both for those awaiting a decision uh, in their asylum case and for those awaiting reception in a municipality uh, following a granted resident permit. And now something about the results of the audit. As I mentioned, great challenges and increased pr pressure in the reception system. Uh, and the, the number of persons with a resident, already given a resident, resident permit in the um, reception system um, is also increasing from 4,800 in 2012 to maybe 9,000 in th this year. So it's, um, as I said, a very difficult situation. The accommodation during and after the asylum period uh, should promote the first work first principle. Um, and um, the accommodation today, as Gunnar mentioned, the EBO and ABO, uh, the accommodation is not located in metropolitan areas, but mainly in small towns. And um, not taking into account the local and regional labor markets. So it's often so that you have uh, empty apartments but no jobs. And this is a hard situation. Uh, the work first principle in the reception system needs to be strengthened. Um, and then. The reception system offers very few initiatives that promote work and self-support. Um, for instance, the asylum seeker have to um, get their own internships um, and um, very little help. Um, very few initiatives compared to what it was a few years ago. 
and this is, um, as we see it, not good for the, in, for the f uh, later integration process. Early initiatives shall meet different needs. Everyone has different needs. Some need more uh, language training or, voc uh, or <coughs> internships or help to get a work. So this is also very, very important that uh, these initiatives shall meet different needs. Introduction to the Swedish language is also very important, but um, since the 1st of January last year, the Migration Board no longer procures Swedish lessons for asylum seekers within the reception system. No more Swedish is learned, um, and this is also something that uh, it is common for the asylum seekers to request some form of simpler language introduction, but the Migration Board has nothing to offer today. And this is also a problem because language, as we all know, is very important. You have to know the language to get an internship or to work, so... Um, and we are not talking about SFE. We are talking about some very simple language taught in, uh, during, uh, the, in the reception system when you wait uh, for your decision. And also civic information and uh, contacts are very important. More civic information, more contacts, what to do in the Swedish society, different um, institutions to go to, if I want to learn Swedish, where should I go, and so on. This is also something that the Migration Board has to work more with, to, to give some more information very early when you come to, to Sweden. And then something about our recommendations, uh, and first to the government. They should follow up the division of responsibility and the transfer of information between the Swedish Migration Board and the Swedish Public Employment Service in order to facilitate and speed up the labour market establishment of those granted a residence permit. And here is our integration perspective of those granted a residence permit and those that should be integrated later on. The government should also follow up that the asylum seekers have equivalent access to information and that asylum seekers who do not have employment or an internship are given the opportunity to establish contacts and in other ways be introduced to the society. And also follow up that introduction to the Swedish language is offered and adapted to the needs of asylum seekers and their length of time in the reception systems. This is also very important to mention that for, for many people it, it's a short process. Uh, sometimes within a month or two you have um, your residence permit and then you move on to the Swedish Public Employment Service and the legislation of establishment that is new from 1st December 2010. Um, s but other people have to wait in the reception system sometimes for years, and um, it's sometimes a very difficult social situation because you have nothing to do, uh, and very little help from uh, both the municipality and from different institutions. So we have a very, sometimes a very short process, but sometimes also a very long one. Uh, and then our recommendations to the Swedish Migration Board. Um, they should, as I mentioned before, work to strengthen the work first principle. This is in Swedish Arbetslinjen, work first principle, in the reception system, by making it easier for asylum seekers to undertake an internship or to work during their time in the reception system. Um, an asylum seeker can work if um, she or he can show a passport, for instance, or uh, other identification, uh, then you can work during your time when you wait at your decision from the Swedish Migration Board. Uh, or you can have an internship, but, but as, uh, as I said before, when you have no Swedish language, then it's more difficult to find an internship and to find an employer who would give you this possibility. 
And also, uh, the Migration Board should provide asylum seekers who do not have employment or an internship with language support um, and other initiatives based on the in individual circumstances and the time in the reception system. Uh, and as you see, once again, language, work, and time in the system. And also follow up to a greater extent that the initiatives provided within the system are equivalent and accessible for all asylum seekers. Regardless of language affiliation or place of residence or type of accommodation, or, able, uh, or the reception unit at which they are registered, we visited six different reception units and we could uh, see that they work slightly differently. Often it's so that um, you have uh, people, uh, em employees at the uh, Migration Board that uh, are very interested in these issues and uh, do what they can to give good service. Uh, we have many people, we have met many people who are trying to do their best, but um, with very few resources and um, difficulties, then it's, uh, we see some differences between different uh, reception units. And also, if you live in um, the northern, north of Sweden, for instance, or uh, in metropolitan areas, we all can also see some, some um, differences. And also, uh, regarding the, their home language, uh, some of the smaller language groups have no introduction system today, because there are, there are difficulties finding someone who can translate. So, uh, if you belong to uh, such a group, then uh, you don't get any information at all about how the Swedish society works. And this is also a problem. And this is a responsibility for the Swedish Migration Board to try to do their best. And we understand that it's very difficult sometimes uh, at smaller units or in, in smaller towns, but this is something they have to follow. I mentioned the act before from 94, and it's, it says that you have to give some initiatives, for instance, um, language courses. And also st strengthen the social aspect of reception by working uh, for the creation of more meeting places, local meeting places between asylum seekers and local people and the local society. In um, smaller cities, towns like, for instance, Flen and other cities, we also see that uh, often the civic society um, contributes to the integration process, and this is very, very good, but we also see that uh, in some places there are no civic organizations like the Red Cross or other organizations. So, um, once again, it's very important to um, work with the social aspects of reception, so it is clear for everyone what you can do in Sweden, where you can go if you need some help, and, and um, to work more with these issues. Um, do you have any questions? Because I'm not in the panel, so I can answer if you have any questions now. Otherwise, thank you very much.